Hey everyone, it's Rebecca with Team Ladybug and I am here with January 2024's Beetle Box. So what we got in this month's box was six liquid chameleon chrome powders and a gel polish, a limited edition gel polish called Marshy Mallow Macaron Donut Glaze Gel Polish. If you received the 13 Days of Halloween box, this is a sister to that gel polish and it works in a similar fashion. It's really pretty. Okay, so with the chromes, let's look at the colors that we got. The first one, a purple chameleon liquid chrome, then deep blue chameleon chrome, magenta chameleon chrome, emerald green, silver, this one's my favorite, and then a gold chameleon liquid chrome. The packaging opens pretty easily and you just take out the little bottle. But on the package itself, it tells you that it's a liquid chrome powder, it's chameleon mirror chrome, and it gives you the ingredients and basically how to use it. I'm going to show you how I used each one of these, but first I'll show you what they look like when you open the bottle. These are really convenient. You can take them with you if you need to travel and you don't want to take powder and worry about the powder spillage. It's also good if you want a lot of control of where your powder goes, your chrome. Obviously, um, if you're just putting it in little spots or if you want multiple chromes in different colors and you want to blend them together, it gives you control of where those chromes actually go as opposed to just using a powder chrome. And let me show you how I use them. So I am starting with using the Vintage Villains Full of Woe on the base of pretty much all of these nails except for a couple. So I'm just gonna get those prepped and ready. Then I'll meet you back here. So I decided to try Ladybug Luster Wet Look Top Gel for these and it worked. So apply a thin layer of that and cure for 10 seconds. Then go ahead and apply your chrome. I'm gonna swatch each color and as I do, I'll show you the different techniques that I used for this, but dabbing seems to work for me. And then you will have to let it dry. Let it dry for a minute or two minutes. If you're doing hands, do one hand, let it dry, do the other hand, and then you can rub it in. I recommend using a glove to rub it in and make sure you get it good. This is the silver chrome. Once you have it all rubbed in, you're going to have to coat it with metallic glaze. Put a thin layer on of that, cure it, and then you can apply your top coat. Okay, let's go to the gold. Still, uh, I you know do start with swashing it on or sw uh, swathing it on, I'm not even sure the word, and then I dab to get full coverage. Just remember that if you miss some spots, you can always go back in and touch up later, but you might as well do it the first time and let it dry. And then you can rub the nail and get the full coverage that way. We're always going to put metallic glaze over the top of this so that it does uh, act as a double-sided sticky tape. And then once that's cured, we can go ahead and add a Ladybug Luster Wet Look Top Gel for a finished look on this nail. The gold is really pretty. Wait till you get these outside. All right, so for the next nail, we're gonna use Outshine. I know it's gonna work. I'm putting a thin coat on and I'm gonna cure it for 10 seconds once I have this coat on. And now I'm gonna use the deep blue. So just dab this on as usual, uh, the same application process and let it dry. This is the one chrome that I recommend gloves with more than the others. I, I recommend using gloves for application for all of these because you really want the pressure you can do with the glove as opposed to using a silicone tool or a sponge dauber and it will get on your skin. The blue is a little bit more difficult to get off your skin. I, I just recommend using gloves. Once that's done, to seal it in, we're gonna use metallic glaze, again, with a thin layer, cure that, and then you can top coat. All right, so with the purple, I'm just gonna do this on the full of woe. I did not add any sort of top coat to this, so I'm just gonna put it over that and see how it goes. It looks like it's got a pretty smooth coverage, 
and it looks like it's covering the whole thing. So if you're using the Vintage Villains collection, you probably don't need a top coat over it in order to apply the chrome. The one thing you don't want to forget is the metallic glaze at the end. So just apply that and then you can cure. Okay, so this time I'm going back to adding the Wet Look Top Gel as a top coat and I'm gonna stripe it on and not get full coverage and see how this goes. So I'm just gonna rub it in after it's dry and see about how much the coverage is and see if we can cover those bits. It doesn't look like it's getting everything. Um, it might be because there's less chrome applied. So I'm gonna go in and dab more chrome in the spots that are not covered and see if we're able to adjust that. Um, in case you do have this happen, we'd like to know what's gonna happen if we can fix it or if we have to start over. So it's dry now and let's see if it worked. All right, and we're rubbing it in. Yeah, I think this works. So I think that if you miss some spots, you can go back in, add more chrome, let it dry again, and then rub it in and do your metallic glaze at the end and you've got a full coverage cure. And then we can top coat these last three nails with the Ladybug Luster Wet Look Top Gel. I'm just doing the green one, the blue one, and the purple. Here is a sample of each of the chromes over black. I hope you like them as much as I do. Okay, so on to the nail art. I didn't do the swatch of the magenta because I'm going to do it for this nail. So you can see they're all pretty much the same as how you apply them. This one goes on pretty smooth and I'm just going to dab and make sure that I have full coverage. And then once that's dry, I'm going to again use a glove and rub out the color and make sure that it's fully coated and you can see that some of it does come off on the glove so again use those instead of using your finger. I don't really recommend using a sponge dauber, I tried it. Okay so then we're gonna top coat it with the metallic glaze, uh, just do a thin coat to cover and then we'll cure. It's so pretty! Okay get Velvet Touch Matte Top Gel, put it over the top of that, cure it, and then we can set this nail aside. Okay, for the next nail, I'm gonna put Ladybug Luster Wet Look Top Gel over the top, cure that for 10 seconds, and now you're going to get the silver chrome and do sort of a diagonal pattern, just dab it on. Then I'm gonna use some blue chrome and put a little bit of that on on the nail. You can use whatever colors you want. I just chose these colors. Then I'm going to use the green and add a little bit of that. And then I think I'm going to use all the colors except the gold. So I'm going to add the purple at the top, put that on here, and then add the magenta at the bottom. Let that dry. And then once it's dry, you can go in and rub it around. I'm trying to keep it so that the colors sort of show, but I want them to blend together as well. So I'm gonna turn the nail and blend only in certain directions just to keep the integrity of the colors, but still get them to blend well. And once I'm happy with the way this is blended, this nail is done. So all we need to do is add some metallic glaze put that on in a thin layer and cure that and it does look pretty good so let's show you that you can see a little bit of the hollow in there and then we're going to top coat with the ladybug luster wet look top gel okay let's look at the marshy mellow macaron gel polish and see the consistency here it's pretty sheer so I recommend putting it over a base color. You could use white, you could use a mint green, you could use a blue. Depending on what you put it over it's going to take that sort of color on. I chose white because I just wanted to give you the accurate color of what it is. You could just do this over nothing and have a sheer nail but um, I'm going to try to get the polka dots and place them where I want them because I rather like to have my polka dots precisely placed. Not everybody's like that. 
it's probably just me but anyway um, I'm trying to get these to go where I want so I'm just gonna go ahead and get a nine millimeter brush and move them around and put them exactly where I want them if you decide to precisely place your polka dots try that tongue twister anyway if you decide to do this you probably will need a rubber base gel or something to smooth out the top because it may cause some ripples in your polish and you want to have a smooth finish so I'm just going to put a rubber base gel over the top and cure that so that my gel is a little bit smoother so here I go and then I'm going to tip it upside down to make sure it levels out and then I'll cure we have to use a matte top gel for this next part. You can use the velvet touch and then buff the whole thing. Make sure there's no shine because we don't want the chromes to stick to it. However, Tracy, let me use some of that new artistic matte that we are going to get in. I just have like a little bit. I can't show you the bottle or anything. Uh, it's going to be coming soon. I know you have to cure this product for two minutes, so I'm gonna do that, but I also know that Chrome won't stick to it, so that's a big plus in this design that I'm doing. Okay, so now I'm gonna get some black whipped cream gel, and I'm going to uh, get my nine millimeter brush as well. I'm not even gonna put this on a palette at this point. I'm just gonna get a little bit out of the pot and take note that I am getting the thinnest amount on my brush. I do not have a thick amount here. There's no hot dog on here. We're gonna create a triangle of three dots, an upside down triangle. So two eyes and a little mouth down at the bottom. And that's the beginning of our heart. Okay, so we'll get a little bit of whipped cream gel. We're gonna make a tent. So take the single dot and draw a line down on either side to make a tent. And then you're going to start in the middle between the two dots at the top and come down towards the outside edge, uh, making either parentheses or a tent that got a lot of rain and it's smushed now. So then come from the dot again, pull down and around towards the edge of the bottom of the heart, and then do the same on this other side, except do not connect them. Only come down partially, because we are actually gonna make this into a little arrow heart. So pull down, refine your heart on the one side so that the sides are even. You don't want it to be too thick, but you can do a lot of refining with this whipped cream gel. It's not gonna move on you or um, flow. It's gonna stay where you put it. Okay, again, we're basically adjusting the heart, just refining, making it so that it comes uh, to a point here because that's the end of the arrow and you want your lines to be smooth for this chrome. You don't want them lumpy. So once you have your lines basically done and you're happy with the way that the heart looks, you can do the end bits. We're gonna do the point of the arrow, just uh, do little lines, maybe thicken it up so that it actually has uh, some meat to it in there. And I'm just gonna refine this until I'm happy with the way the arrow is. And then we're gonna do the fletching, which is the feathery part of the arrow. And I'm only gonna do two on each side. If your heart is thinner, you could probably put three in there, but you really only need two. You, you understand that it's a heart, like everybody will see that it's an arrow, a heart arrow. Um, and just fix that the way you want. Make sure that it's the same width all around. You don't want it too thick or too thin again. Just get it the way it looks good. And then you need to, once you're happy with the way the heart looks, you need to fully cure this for the full 60 seconds and make sure that it's not gonna go anywhere because we're gonna put chrome on this next, okay? So if you're happy with the design, go ahead and cure. I'll pause for a second so you can see the design. Okay, now that we're back and it's cured, we're going to put the magenta chrome 
just on the arrow. We obviously don't have to put it over the whole nail, so you're using minimal chrome here. Just put it on and let it dry. Okay, now we are taking a squeegee tool and we're gonna try to burnish this in. It's, eh, it didn't work that well, so I'm gonna use my finger and a glove and just make sure to rub this in. As you can see, it is not sticking to the matte top gel that I applied. It was not the Velvet Touch, it's our new one that's coming, so get ready for that. Okay, now uh, the nail's done. I'm just gonna totally top coat it with the Ladybug Luster. Because it's not completely covered with the chrome, we don't have to use metallic glaze. And I'm just gonna use the Ladybug Luster, let it level out, and once the light line is good, we can go ahead and cure. Okay, so we're gonna get Ladybug Luster Wet Look Top Gel, put some of that on a palette, and we're gonna grab our nine millimeter brush. You can take the nail that we put the matte top gel on, grab a tiny dot of the ladybug luster, and then dot it into two little dots on the top of the nail, two little dots in the center of the nail, and two little dots at the bottom of the nail. Depending on the length of your nail, you will have more or less of these rows. And drag each dot down into a V shape to form a heart and refine until you're happy with the way those look. If you're a slow worker, I would recommend curing after you have these hearts done. Okay, I am now gonna take another dot and I'm adding three more dots along the right side and then I'm gonna pull out to make lines. So we're basically making a quilting kind of pattern here and I am drawing the lines up to come up and down to go down from the heart and then we will do the same but in the opposite way on the other side of the hearts. So again three dots and then pull down and up towards the heart, up towards the heart and down away, up towards the heart and down away. Okay and once we have the three sets of lines done on each side we're going to add another dot in the center and pull down away and towards the heart, towards the heart and down away and do the same on the other side. Uh, you can see where the pattern goes and fill it in as you work, but two more dots pulling down and away and up towards the center. We want it to be a little bit thicker in the middle, so that's why we're pulling from the center of each of these dots. As I said, depending on the size of your nail and the shape of your nail, you'll be able to determine where you need to fill in to finish the pattern. Once you're happy, you can cure. That's your next nail done. Okay, so get a nine millimeter brush, your black whipped cream gel. So I also use the artistic matte top coat on this so it won't get chrome on it. And we're gonna try another nail design. So we're gonna get the whipped cream gel. I'm just going right out of the container and we're gonna make two little dots and then uh, put them where you want throughout the nail. Depending on the size of the hearts that you want, you can put them smaller and closer together or bigger and farther apart. It just depends on what you're looking for. I wanted little tiny hearts all over the nail and I wanna use different chromes on these. So once you have your dots down, take and make your little tent at the bottom to create a, sort of like a weird smiley face on the nail. And then we're gonna finish forming the heart, but I'm gonna go around and put the little tents or A's without the center line and form the heart by pulling down from the dots to create a little heart shape. This is just an easy way as a guide to make sure that your hearts are all pretty similar instead of doing random hearts and different sizes all over. You can keep your size of your hearts pretty consistent. I mean, they're not going to be exact because you're hand painting this but they'll be pretty consistent. And then fill in all of the hearts. And once they're all filled in to the way you want, we're gonna fully cure that because you cannot flash cure whipped cream gel. 
and then we will chrome over the top of it. So I also want to make a note that I also tried this with the Vintage Villains Full of Woe, the black, and it also worked, but I had the same sort of uh, issue at the end of the nail. And this is basically an oops nail, which is why you don't see it in the full set of nails that I did um, on the Beetle Box picture and on this video, because it did not have the end result that I wanted. And anyway, you can use the Vintage Villains and fully cure those and the chrome will stick to those as well. But let's go ahead and show you what happened to me. It also happened when I tried just using a regular matte top gel and filing the whole thing matte um, off so that the chrome wouldn't stick to it. So it's not an issue with the top gel, it's an issue with this one particular chrome which I sort of alluded to earlier with wearing the gloves and why you should be wearing them. Okay, so I'm almost done here. I'm going to add a little bit of polka dots at the end uh, just to fill in and make the black cute. And then that's fully cured. And here, here is where it all went horribly wrong. I used the deep blue chameleon liquid chrome over white. I added a bunch of other colors that were in that other nail and now I'm going to just burnish them in with the glove making sure that the colors uh, sort of stay with what heart they're supposed to be on blend them together rub them in and you see the chrome's not sticking to the nail however keep looking and the blue is not coming off the blue pigment has now transferred itself to the white nail and totally messed with the vibe that I was going for. I'm not happy with it at all. Also, my hearts are a little lumpy. So I'll top coat this and show you what it looks like, but I, I don't like the blue over it. Everybody else seemed to think it was okay, but not me. Okay, here's what it is. For this next nail, I did a white base gel. Then I took the black full of woe and made sort of a heart shape coming off the edge. I did the marshy mellow over the rest of the remaining white. I put artistic matte over the white part and wet look top gel over the black part. Now I am taking the purple liquid chrome. I'm putting it over the black part and I am going to rub this until it covers that area and then I'm going to let it dry. Once it's dry, I can rub it in with my glove. And as you can see, it does not adhere to the artistic mat. So I cannot wait for that product to come out. You guys are gonna really love it. And then I'm gonna top the whole thing with metallic glaze. As always, we will do a full cure over the metallic glaze. Then I'm gonna top it with wet look top gel and cure that. I need some gaudy LED glue on my palette so I have full control. I'm going to take a nine millimeter brush and just outline the edge of the heart. This is so that we can apply crystals along the edge and we know where our line is uh, pretty clearly. So I was going to take some varied sizes of crystals but I ended up deciding that I just want one row of all the same size crystals. You could do whatever you'd like, use different colors that go with the polka dots in the marshy mellow macaron. Um, you know, have fun with it. I wanted them all to be sort of the same color, a sheer color, so it fades from the light white part of the nail to the darker chrome part of the nail. So I'm just gonna put them along the edge there and then I'm gonna fully cure that. I like the way it looks, you could stop here, but I think I'm gonna add a second row. So after that's cured, I've gone in and I'm gonna put another line of gel on here. This is also a good reason to cure that first line and not cure the whole thing at once because you have something to press the second row of crystals against so the whole thing won't slip and slide around. You've just got that solid layer that's already been cured and you can pretty tightly squeeze in your crystals and mess with them so that they line up the way you want on the nail. So I'm just gonna put this whole second row in 
and once I'm happy with how many crystals I have on there and the way it looks I will go ahead and fully cure that and that's another nail down for us so you can do pretty quick easy fun heart nail art for Valentine's Day or just for any time if you like hearts I uh, hope you like this one Okay, for our next nail, we are gonna need, again, the black whipped cream gel. And this time, nine millimeter brush, I'm gonna take the whipped cream gel and I'm gonna put it right on the palette. I am mixing it up a little. You know, you periodically have to mix these up even though they're a solid gel, they do sometimes come apart. So put a bit of that on your palette and get your nail ready. For this, we need a solid black nail. I already have top coated this with the Ladybug Luster Wet Look Top Gel and I'm going to take the black and make sure it's not too heavy on the brush. I'm just going to add one, two dots on the nail. So you can see I've tried to move the nail so you can see where I put the dots so that they're basically in the center part of the nail. And again, we're going to make our tent coming down from the bottom dot and bring it up so you can see that. I'm just going to move it in the light. I know working black on black is kind of hard to see sometimes. So I'm going to zoom in and make sure you can see it. And then I'm going to come around and make my smushed tent, uh, your little parentheses lines. And there's the top of my heart. So I hope you can see that and then we're going to bring it around just like we did with the other heart nail except this time we're going to connect both sides of the heart you want a fully formed heart with no gaps and just go around the edges until you're satisfied with the way that it looks don't make this too thick but you do want a little bit of height and that's why we're using the whipped cream gel so that we can give some dimension to this nail. This one's all about the dimension along with the chrome that we're going to be adding later. I love that the chrome sticks to the whipped cream and the Vintage Villain collection and the Wet Look Top Gel. So you don't really need anything extra for these nails and the chrome is really one of the easiest chromes to work with. So add another set of two dots on the top and the bottom and we're going to outline this heart. You're just going to go equidistance all the way around the whole heart uh, depending on the size of your nail. You may or may not be able to make a fully formed heart all the way around but hopefully you can if you just go you know a little bit past the heart that you had and you haven't cured anything yet so if your inside heart is too big you can wipe it off and start over but we want at least two hearts that are completely solid on the nail that go all the way around and that way you know it gives just a little bit more depth and dimension to this and then add your next heart this one may or may not go off the nail again depending on the size of the tip that you have um, so just keep going and forming your heart equidistant from the last heart so that they all have basically you know it's hand painted so it's not going to be perfect but it's going to be perfect enough and you just want to outline exactly what you did previously and go ahead and adjust the line to how you want it, making sure that it's a fairly smooth line. If you have to go over it a couple of times, that's okay. And just keep going down to finish the end of the nail. Depending on the length will depend on how many rows you have. Just make sure they're equidistant. The dot in the center always helps me. So that's what I'm going with. And once you get this all done and adjusted the way you want so that everything is smooth, you can go ahead and cure. Here's a shot of what it looks like. I'm going to go ahead and get the magenta, the silver, and the deep blue chameleon liquid chrome. And I'm going to apply those. First, I'm going to put the magenta in the center and I'm dabbing this on 
it's a little bit different with a textured nail. You really have to get in there. So go ahead and do that. Then I'm adding silver to the next set of the hearts. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're gonna blend this into sort of like a gradient anyway. Just make sure you get some good coverage. And then I'm just gonna do blue at the whole on the whole bottom. Um, the silver will end up blending into this quite well, but I want a little bit more blue in this. And then once it's dry, we can rub it in with a glove and get that going. Um, since it's textured, it's not, you know, easy to get in there. The glove will help, but I ended up rubbing so much that I think I rubbed some of the chrome off or because it's textured, I didn't have it in the right spots. I'm not even sure. Anyway, just make sure you have full coverage if you do this. I'm gonna go back in and add a little bit more color because I think I want a little bit more pink on here then add some silver in the spots that I missed and I'll be able to fill this in, let it dry and come back in and burnish it. Uh, maybe a little bit more pink there. Okay, uh, magenta. So uh, now that it's dry, I'm just gonna rub this in and get a little bit more of a rosy glow with the extra magenta on there. I like that. So it'll go with the rest of the set that we have. And when you're happy with that, then you will definitely need the metallic glaze on this. Number one, um, to cover all of the spots, make sure you go sideways and really get it in the grooves there. You can keep this textured. You don't have to, you know, fill it in so that it's fully one level. Or because we really didn't do this too thick, you can put a layer on, cure it, and put a second layer on so that you have it uh, flat and then just top coat with ladybug luster wet look top gel and yes I did bring these outside for you to see look at them look at the shimmer holy cow these are amazing outside when you do them please get them outside tell us what you think I hope you love them the chromes are just stunning and they're easy to use I hope you enjoyed these nails as much as I enjoyed creating them for you. If you make them, tag us.